Russ Center for Media. Welcome to Focus on Southeast, a monthly program on issues and events impacting the campus of Southeast Missouri State University. I'm Dan Woods with KRCU Public Radio. Today we're talking with Southeast President Dr. Carlos Vargas and we'll talk about recent university news including a huge accomplishment for Southeast Cyber Defense Team and a new partnership with Sinclair Community College centered around unmanned aerial aircraft systems. Dr. Vargas, welcome to the program. Hi, Dan. How are you? Good, good, good to see to you see again. You. Thank you very much. We have a lot of stuff to cover, as we usually do, so let's mm -hmm. dive right in. Catapult Creative House uh, is unveiling a computing space to help students move their idea, whether it's a new app or a website or a tech startup, from concept to reality. And I read there's going to be a 3D printer there, accessible, some really interesting, cool stuff. So what brought about this idea? Well, I think it's uh, it's been part of our uh, entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship program. Uh, we want to give uh, students an opportunity to uh, develop new ideas and take them to make them become a reality. And uh, Catapult has been uh, in, engaged in providing space for students in other areas. And and for some time now, we've been thinking about the fact that we need to have some students who do. Uh, coding and, and uh, computer science uh, in general and give them an opportunity to uh, explore their ideas. Uh, computers will be there and again, like you said, there's going to be a, a 3D printer too. And so those are cool. You can do all kinds of things <laughs> yeah. with 3D printers these days. Yeah. Probably reproduce me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting program as I read about it and I think there's a big tie with computer science Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of excitement, as I read, in that particular department to have this space to be able mm -hmm. to go to, to to take these ideas and flesh them out and make them turn into something. I think so. The, the fact that, uh, that we have devices like this and you can write apps for it and yeah. have them do all kinds of uh, interesting things is, is something that really uh, creates uh, an opportunity for uh, youngsters, actually. They, they don't even have to be college students, but youngsters to to uh, become creative and, and, and to do new things. So this is a, a wonderful uh, uh, development in, in Catapult, uh, which is of course part of the Douglas E. Green Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the university. Yeah, one of the things I noticed too is that uh, there's opportunities to do, t do things after hours mm -hmm. uh, if you have access to do that. So that I guess when sometimes when inspiration hits, as you know, it doesn't always happen between eight and five. <laughs> so this gives students the opportunity to pretty much go whenever and to have a space to meet, maybe have a team together yes. to be able to work on these things. What does mm -hmm. this really mean for students, I mean, in the broader picture? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it helps students develop this mindset that they really need to become and continue to be innovators, and that uh, they can do that. Uh, it's, a, it's a way of, uh, of having the students uh, recognize that it, it is in their power, it's their ability to develop new ideas and to actually carry them to a point where they can uh, think about creating a business out of this. And, and that's, uh, if you think about the way that the United States has evolved over decades and decades, uh, that's been, uh, a, a feature of, of, uh, of the uh, American entrepreneurship has mm -hmm. actually been well recognized uh, and, and we are trying to continue to do that with, uh, with the students. Well, let's move on to another topic and that has to do with uh, an American hero, mm -hmm. which was a musical co-written by a 2017 Southeast graduate, Cody Cole of O'Fallon and Dr. Ken Stilson, who's chair of the Conservatory of Theater and Dancer at the University. And it's been selected to be performed in this summer's New York Music Festival, and this is a big deal. This is a, this festival is in its fifteenth year. Yes. Uh, so this has been a great opportunity for not just Cody and for Ken, but for that whole department, from what I understand. Right. I I, I think this is uh, a feather on our cap. I mean, uh, our Conservatory of Theater and Dance, the whole uh, School of uh, Visual and Performing Arts, uh, is is a incredible uh, addition to the university. So. Uh, the fact that we have a river campus and we have the school uh, there uh, to promote uh, arts uh, is it, just fantastic. And so uh, this also shows you the kind of quality of faculty that we have and students because it's, mm -hmm. uh, Cole was a student at the time that he, he uh, worked with Dr. Stilson in developing this uh, musical. and. Uh, to send it to New York, which is a very well-renowned uh, uh, to the musical festival there, and be selected, 
among, I think, uh, at least 200, if not more, uh, submissions. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just quite an honor. So we are very pleased, very happy. And that, of course, helps us in the, our recruitment efforts. That was my next question. How does that affect recruitment and retention? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, you know, when, when students are already here and they see that that's happening, they don't want to leave. <laughs> they want to be part of something. And so this uh, actually continues to promote our retention. But it also attracts students because they say, what's happening there at Southeast? Uh, you know, they actually... Uh, are in this place called Cape Girardeau, and and their 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 plays and their musicals are being uh, performed in New York City. I mean that's really quite an impressive accomplishment. Well, and I read that uh, Cody is looking forward to working on his next musical. <laughs> I mean this has yes. really inspired him, yes. and I think it also for students that are in that program, they see that well, a student here just like me yep. helped co helped co-write yes. a musical. I mean, that's impactful. That's right, and I, that you you said it right. Uh, it, you know, it's a it's a it's a way of uh, making students feel that they can do whatever they choose to do if they just set their minds to it. And uh, and and this institution has everything they need to be able to excel. That's why we talk about launching extraordinary careers uh, at at the university. Uh, we do it in in the arts. We do it in in the sciences. We do it in in humanities, with I mean every education, business, you name it. So it's just a small sample of some of the things that are going on, literally in every department within every yes. college at the university. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, we're I'm hoping that students will continue to uh, uh, look at you know who we are and what we do. I I, I sometimes tell the students and parents when they come to uh, uh, orientation. Uh, I say, well, parents always want their kids to go to the best university, the best college. And I say to them, oftentimes parents feel that the best college they can send their kids to is the most expensive they can afford. And that is not necessarily the case. They need to look for that institution that is going to, uh, where the student is going to fit, where the student is going to feel the kind of environment that is going to nurture their creativity. And so I tell parents to look at those things, uh, look at how uh, uh, the institution uh, cares about the students and, and, and really is committed to the student success. That's a good note to take a break on. When we come back, I want to talk about drones mm -hmm. and about our cyber defense team. How about Excellent. that? Excellent. So we'll take a short break. We'll continue our conversation with Dr. Vargas in just a moment. You're watching Focus on Southeast. We'll be right back. At Southeast Missouri State, we know agriculture can mean so much more than working on the farm. It means research and lab work that lead to profitability and sustainability. It means creating new jobs, jobs that other people haven't even thought of yet. It means the spirit of entrepreneurship and the desire to make your own way. You want to do something groundbreaking beyond plowing fields, so let's get started. National forests are essential to life. Majestic and grand, they clean our air, supply drinking water to millions of Americans, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations and inspire us to think big. Now, our national forests need us. Fires and natural disasters destroy millions of trees each year. That's why we're replanting our forests from coast to coast. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Facing life's difficulties takes strength and determination. Whether it's physical challenges or struggles you can't see, it takes strength to ask for help when you need it. Learn how other veterans have reached out and hear their stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net.
Welcome back to Focus on Southeast. I'm Dan Woods with KRCU Public Radio. We're talking today with Southeast President Carlos Fargus. So let's talk a little about drones. Southeast and Sinclair Community College in Dayton, Ohio are forming a partnership on aerospace and related technologies, including unmanned aerial or aircraft systems, what I layman's terms, I guess, is drones, is what I always say. Right. Um, the initiatives will include education, workforce training, development, applied research, and Sinclair, as I read, was one of the early uh, institutions getting involved in this, and now there's a partnership. So what will this program do uh, for our students here at Southeast? Well, this is, I'm hoping that it's going to be a really, really exciting program that is going to continue to attract uh, students in the area and actually beyond uh, the area. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, St. Clair is an institution that started its program in 2008 okay. or thereabouts, and uh, we uh, were aware of uh, St. Clair. I was aware because of uh, some, uh, I actually uh, lived for a period of time in the Dayton area uh, with my oh, wife, okay. and when I worked there for a period of time, and so I was, I'm aware of, of St. Clair and the work that they do, and so once we put in place our four-year program here, uh, we thought that it would be useful to uh, to talk to them. They being a two-year institution, uh, we thought it would be a natural mm -hmm. for us to connect with them so that they, uh, we could uh, entice some of the, uh, excite some of the students in, into coming to, to Southeast. And so we are right now in that process. They're very interested. When we first contacted them, they were interested in our precision agriculture application of the drones uh, and so that's an area that they are very interested in that's an area that uh, we are continuing to work on here in, in uh, southeast Missouri the boot hill of course is an area where mm -hmm. agriculture is very prominent yeah. and, and uh, farmers really want to use uh, drones to uh, to simplify their operations and make them more effective so uh, we, we're very excited about this relationship with uh, with Sinclair and the fact that they have been in existence for some time also means that they have explored areas that we are really in the process of exploring. Uh, we're excited about working, for example, with the city of Cape. Uh, they do have uh, a few drones. Uh, we've actually had conversations with them. And the idea is, uh, that, uh, I'm hoping that this uh, will open the door for uh, uh, internships, possibly, for our students uh, to, to work there at the city and, and help with the, uh, the, the use of the drones in different areas. And so we're, we're really uh, looking forward to that. We've already received uh, inquiries from uh, organizations that, that have learned about our program, and they're starting to find out uh, you know, how the program works, how can we get our students to visit. Uh, we just got an email, I got an email last night about an organization and uh, community college that wants to bring their students here because they found out about the, the program. I talked to Dr. Jim Peterson, who's in the, the Polytech uh, department, and he works with these, and he, he's very excited. He came, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, this was Dr. Vargas's vision. I was so excited to come to Southeast. Mm -hmm. And this is still, is this the only program like this in the state of Missouri? That is absolutely correct. It's the first and only okay. program in the state of Missouri. Uh, you know, it, it, what's going to happen is the same thing that happened with cybersecurity. We were the first ones also to establish a program in cybersecurity, and now you have them everywhere. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we are the first ones in, in drones, and, and we're, uh, so we're going to have to be ready for others to develop their own programs. And so what do they say? Imitation is the highest form of flattery? Yes, so that's you have a good right. idea, and then somebody's using your idea. That's right. It's a good now, thing. of course, what that means for us is we need to continue to evolve. We need to continue yeah. to advance, uh, make sure that we continue to strengthen our program and, and, and make it uh, unique, uh, even though there will be others that are going to emulate mm -hmm. what we're doing. One of the stats that I read, and I thought this was interesting, Crystal Jones, who's the director of Southeast Economic Business and Engagement Center, said this about drones. The economic impact of drone integration in Missouri through 2025 is expected to reach nearly $1.6 billion, mm -hmm. creating almost 2,000 jobs that will generate about $10.4 million in tax revenue. <laughs> so this is a huge, growing area. It is, it is. And so... I, I like the idea that, that, that we are really, uh, you know, sort of the wave is coming and we're already there ahead of it. We're not behind the wave. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a, a very nice uh, position to have at this point. So mm -hmm. we're uh, strengthening the program. Uh, Dr. Peterson is doing a great job. Uh, and we're trying to, t to, to tie it, uh, for example, with the cybersecurity program that we have already. Mm -hmm. 
so interdisciplinary work is beautiful, uh, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that we're trying to do here at the university. So speaking of cyber team, let's talk about um, our cyber defense team uh, won the Missouri Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition mm -hmm. for the sixth straight year. Yes. So they won top honors in the multi-state competition, included Missouri, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Iowa, and then they took the state championship, defeating MST, Missouri's yes. uh, uh, Science Marala. and Technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six years in a row. Yes. That, that's, so that's not random. <laughs> no, because you're going to have different students coming through the program over a six-year period. So what does that tell us about that program? Yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> a, that's right. It's just a way to confirm that uh, this is not a random development, that we really are producing high-quality students. When you talk to Dr. Anand, who is uh, the person, uh, faculty member in the program uh, that essentially started it, uh, he tells you the students get job offers before they finish their junior year sometimes. Uh, they're, really, uh, they're really very sought after and, uh, and, and they're doing a great job. And, and uh, so we're trying to strengthen the program just like we're doing with the drones. We're trying to make it more visible. We're trying to uh, provide the resources that they need so that they can continue to excel and to be at the forefront of, of uh, everybody else. Well, and this is one of those fields that, sh that changes so quickly. I was curious as to what the competition was about. So they had to uh, manage a network and keep a network, in, I guess in a mock situation, from getting attacked or compromised. Mm -hmm. This is some very complicated, complex things that are going on, but uh, obviously the program here is teaching students the skills they need. And when we talked about the potential hacking of elections and all of these other things that are going on, this is the type of thing uh, that these kind of jobs are going to be in high demand going forward, I would imagine. They, they, they are, and, and uh, the, we need to switch our thinking uh, because in the past, uh, attacks and wars took place uh, in a very visible way, uh, mm -hmm. you know, bombs and, and shooting right. and this right. and that. They right. still happen like that, but nowadays you actually have these attacks uh, taking place uh, when you don't even notice it. Uh, and so uh, computer systems are being attacked all the time. And uh, uh, so you, you, you have to be worried about how, how do you defend yourself from these kinds of, of attacks uh, through uh, your computer system. Well, when so many things now, water systems and all kinds of electrical systems are controlled by computers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're so, we're so dependent now, even at the radio station where I worked, of course, years ago, we didn't have to worry about computers too much. But now, if a computer fails, you have to stop and ask yourself, how did we do this yes. before we had this computer that's doing it for us now? And so you almost have to sort of live in both worlds in some cases just right. to avoid any surprises down the line. <laughs> I remember not long ago I had somebody talk to me and say, well, when the banks did everything manually, they were very slow, but they always moved. Now they do it with computers, and when the computer goes down, nothing happens. <laughs> so you have to wait. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly there's the pros and cons of, of doing that. But everything. we need to continue to develop uh, at the university graduates that are skilled in these uh, new areas uh, of, uh, you know, neurodisciplinary areas. Uh, it, it is important that we do that to remain relevant. So our students need to feel that the kinds of programs that we are developing here are making them successful, making them competitive uh, okay. in, 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 the, in the job market. Well, let's take another break. We'll continue our conversation with Dr. Vargas in just a moment. You're watching Focus on Southeast. Stay tuned. for the rest of your life, or you can push your creativity to center stage and develop the skills to back it up. At Southeast Missouri State University, you can surround yourself with minds that are as creative and weird and beautiful as yours at a campus dedicated exclusively to the arts, with classmates who share your passion and faculty who know the industry. You've got talent. Let's see what you got. Problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, 
and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It's going to be hard work, but you've never let that stop you. At Southeast Missouri State, we put that will to do to work for you. You won't just learn in lectures. You'll get your hands dirty, your skills strengthened, and whatever you do, you won't be going it alone. You can do this because you earn everything you get and what you'll earn here will pay off out there. Welcome back to Focus on Southeast. I'm Dan Woods with KRCU Public Radio. We're talking today with Southeast President Carlos Vargas. So let's talk about uh, Launch U, uh, startup training that's coming uh, to the campus pretty soon. This sounds like a very exciting thing for early entrepreneurs to get involved with. I, I think so. Uh, this, these kinds of programs are uh, very beneficial to the community. It really empower individuals with ideas to really start up a business. When you think about starting up a business, uh, if you only have some ideas and you don't know how to come about and how to create, for example, a business plan, mm -hmm. some of that language is not something that you're normally comfortable with. So this program actually facilitates uh, that process and uh, the, the Launch U in particular is, is sponsored by the Isle Casino and they offer actually some uh, uh, funds to be able to reduce the cost of the program and they give yeah. some prices and uh, this is this is perfect this is uh, empowering as individuals with ideas to really explore what can be done and sometimes you end up with a really really exciting type of business uh, you know from from doing this it's one of those things we're not just automatically know how to how to we have an idea but how do you go about getting a business loan and how do you develop a business plan that's something that you really need to do a little bit of research on and learn how to do before you take that step into that and this kind of training makes that possible. Right and, and I think that what's important is to recognize it's not that it's too complicated to do it it's just that you don't know what to do so right. the, the, the course itself just takes you through the various steps that you have to go through and and then at the end you end up with a with a business plan and I think that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing here. I'm excited that uh, that uh, Crystal uh, Jones in the uh, uh, in, in her center is actually doing that, and uh, I'm hoping that this will really produce uh, some businesses, and that mm -hmm. we will uh, benefit from that. The economy of the of, of the area will will benefit from that. There's a lot of programs and opportunities for students that are interested in business and entrepreneurship at mm -hmm. the university and this is just another one of another example of that right. opportunity that's available. And, and there's so many different areas. I, I, I know for example in, in other institutions that I am familiar with uh, in, in the arts uh, people who come to give talks who graduated from the arts uh, they tell the students you know you need to take some courses in business you need to learn how to develop your own yeah. business plan because as an artist, you are going to very likely have to have your own business and manage it and make sure that you understand you know, the, how to mm -hmm. carry your books. It's yeah. not just doing art. Right. So A lot of pieces to that. So in the middle of March, you were in Washington, D.C., and you did some visits with different congressional representatives that represent our area. And I know mm -hmm. you met with uh, Senator McCaskill, mm -hmm. and you talked about ways to make college affordable in Missouri. What kind of things did you discuss with the senator that you might share with us? Well, of course, she's very concerned about that, as, as are we. Uh, we. We really want to, uh, to see and figure out ways in which we can uh, uh, make sure that college is affordable and also that, that the students don't leave with, uh, with a very high uh, level of debt. Uh, because that really uh, gets in the way uh, when they graduate. Mm -hmm. So certainly some of the things that we've done at the university are very useful. Uh, we uh, eliminated nine credits that the students used to have when I came here. Uh, on top of the 42 credit hour that we have for general education, we have added, we had added nine credits uh, to an uh, upper division uh, courses uh, for every student to uh, take to 
uh, essentially ensure that they had understood all the goals for the general education curriculum. And, and we uh, did an analysis of that and we found out that really that was not uh, being effective in uh, achieving what we wanted to achieve and mm -hmm. so we uh, eliminated those nine credits. So that meant that students were able to graduate sooner. Uh, and of course not only sooner but also with less debt. They didn't have to spend so yeah. much money in doing that. So we are continuously looking for ways in which we can uh, make it easy. Uh, certainly uh, affordability is an issue that we are very concerned with and so we, are tr we try to minimize any kind of increases that we have in tuition, recognizing at the same time that there are increases in, in, in the cost of operation of the university that, that makes it very difficult for us to, to never increase tuition. So mm -hmm. we, we sometimes have to do that. And of course, uh, you know, this is a balance between the funding that we receive uh, being a public institution, we receive funding from the state and then we receive uh, a tuition dollars, which is the two basic ways yeah. in which we get funding for uh, uh, the institution. And so when one of them goes down, then then we find ourselves in a difficult position. Yeah. But we are, uh, we try to be very, very uh, thoughtful stewards of the funds that we receive from the state and from tuition to make sure that they go to uh, to uh, benefit the students uh, and, and help them graduate uh, with the least amount of, uh, of cost and that they graduate with the least amount of debt when, when they finish. We got just under a minute, but I, wanted, I noticed that you also met with higher education leaders at the Mexican Embassy. What did you talk about with them? Briefly? Yes, well, I'll tell you, the first thing is, this is the second time we visit them and the result of the first visit was that they actually, we were able to host here, you may remember, 11 students right. uh, from Mexico that came, okay. 11 college students that spent uh, a few weeks here with us. So uh, my visit this time was to thank them for mm -hmm. uh, having uh, helped us and considered us as a, as a site for the students to visit and of course to say to them that we'd be excited to receive uh, ad additional students uh, at, at the university. Very exciting. So. Dr. Vargas, thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you very much, Dan. It was a pleasure. We've been talking with Dr. Carlos Vargas, and don't forget, Focus on Southeast is a collaboration of KRCU Public Radio and the Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University. And don't forget, portions of these monthly conversations with Dr. Vargas will be broadcast on KRCU and are also available as a podcast. Just search for Vargas Speaks. From the Russ Center for Media, I'm Dan Woods, General Manager of KRCU Public Radio. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us next time when we focus on Southeast.